This nuclear debate is going to be a cracker. As you know, I've been on about it for many, many years. But now that it's on properly, it's going to be fascinating. But it's going to take a lot of work to sort the wheat from the chaff. Having a listen to this from Treasurer Jim Chalmers today. With Australia's advantages and opportunities, nothing could be more economically irrational or fiscally irresponsible. Nuclear takes longer, it costs more, and it would waste Australia's unique combination of geological, geographical, geopolitical and meteorological advantages. It might be the dumbest policy ever put forward by a major political party. It is the worst combination of economic and ideological stupidity. It is hard to believe that that man is treasurer because that may have been the dumbest little uh, summary of our energy debate that I have ever heard. He could have been actually describing his own government's plans to replace our fossil fuel energy system with a renewables, something that's never been done before in the world. Let me bring in a Nationals leader, David Littleproud, who joins us live from the Sydney CBD. Thanks for joining us, David. This is extraordinary. I don't know that what they're pretending here. The Labor says we have all these natural advantages for renewables. What, we're the only place in the world, are we, where there's wind and sunshine? Yeah, look, Jim Chalmers' contribution there was arrogant and condescending, not fitting of a treasurer, uh, prepared to have a mature conversation, a mature debate about the energy path that they've taken us, facing up to the facts of what the lived experience of Australians is today, about the money that's been bled out of their wallets, about the unreliability of our manufacturing sector, the fact that they've spent $6.5 billion just from federal subsidies alone in the last two budgets to try and achieve a $275 reduction that, he, that Albanese promised before the last election. And that your bill has gone up at a household level over $750 in in above that. So um, we want to have uh, a, con a, a sensible conversation about this. We want to be the leaders that have the conviction of our courage. Peter Dutton and I uh, today laid down the first step, and that is the very first step, and we wanted to make sure we showed respect to those seven communities to start that consultation process and to say to Australians that instead of subsidising all these multinational uh, renewable energy companies coming in, uh, lasting less than 20 years, packing up and leaving, taking their money, we want to move back to some Australian ownership uh, of them having an investment and a legacy, a legacy not for just for my kids, but for my grandkids, that I can look back and say the privileged position I've been given to come to this parliament, I've left something behind that they and, and my fellow Australians will enjoy. And Peter Dutton, of the National Party's probably been on this just as long as you, Chris, you've been a long proponent of this, but Peter Dutton is the first Liberal leader to have the courage to stand up and to stand for something. And I was proud to stand next to Peter Dutton today. Uh, that was courage, that's political leadership, that's the strength of leadership that the the National and Liberal Party will take the next election. We're prepared to, to, to put our and test our conviction of our courage with the Australian people because there is a better way than this all renewables madness. Uh, we're feeling that not just in our wallets but also in a regional area for what's being torn up in our landscape and our productive areas. Uh, there's a better way and we're putting that forward today. Now, there are many hurdles to overcome before you can implement that overall plan. Now, one of those is winning an election and then you've got to get rid of the federal ban through, uh, get it through a Senate. That's never easy. But I, I want to focus on state governments too. You, know, you might be able to play ball with Peter Malinowskis, the Labor Premier in South Australia. There's no legislative ban there and he's happy to deal with it if the numbers stack up. But what about uh, your own state of uh, Queensland where the LNP say they would oppose nuclear power? Now, we can understand David Christopher fully doesn't want a distraction during uh, his state election campaign on nuclear. Surely you would expect that if he becomes Premier, the LNP are in government in Queensland, he would overturn that view. Well, you'd hope so. Australians want leadership. They want their politicians to stand for something. Peter Dutton and I are going to stand for something. And if we're given that mandate and that honour by the Australian people, then we would expect whoever is Premier of whatever state that they would acknowledge that mandate in knowing that we have to make the decisions for the greater good of this nation. We have an integrated energy system on the East Coast in particular and with South Australia. And it's important that we make those decisions uh, for the greater good. 
and that they help us in a constructive way. That's what people want out of their politicians. They want them to stand for something and they, when the Australian people have made that determination, they expect us at all levels to work together constructively to get on with the job. And that's what we intend to do. We don't want to have to bully our way into this, Peter Dutton and I. Uh, we believe in this. We believe in this passionately. And that's why we've taken this first step today. And we would expect state premiers respect that mandate if we're given the honour to have one after the next federal election and we get on and move because the time uh, to do it is critical and the time to do it is now. Now, you've made some big calls. You say you'd scrap that uh, Illawarra offshore wind project if you won government. There'll be people up at Port Stephens off the Newcastle, the Hunter area, wanting a, a similar process pro pro uh, promise for that offshore wind project. We'll, we'll see where all that ends up. But if you were to win government well, and implement this it. plan... We, uh, we've already... You, you would scrap that one as well, right? But the, we, We've the, already given Port Stephen... Yeah, right. We've made that commitment. That's, that's technology that, that's actually floating 260 yep. uh, metre uh, wind towers uh, that has never been done to that scale in, in the world before. So no, I understand. All right. They, they get the same promise. So too, just Chris. let me take yeah. it this step further. Under your plan, yeah. there'd be nuclear... Renewables wouldn't disappear. There'd still be a big input of renewable energy and there would be gas peaking to, to, to peak up when demand requires it. My question is, how much more of this large-scale renewable rollout would you tolerate? Is it to be capped around about what we've got now, or would there still be a, a large investment in large-scale renewable? Well, this makes a significant dent in any further significant increase, that particularly what the government is under an all-renewables approach. We're going to release our overall mix. I think there is a place for renewables, but what has been done with renewables at the moment has been done near existing transmission lines. The low-hanging fruit's been done. And now the burden is being borne on regional Australians to, to go beyond that. And if we do want to look at this, I think there's an opportunity for us to explore uh, partnering with the, what the states give at the moment, helping with some household battery or some business battery uh, in populated areas, in urban areas, uh, to give them some energy independence. But we need to make sure that we get the mix right and there will be a clear delineation between an all-renewables approach to one that has a transition, an all-lead transition of some of our coal-fired power stations to nuclear with gas and CCS in the right place and a mix of renewables. But we want to get that mix right that's the most affordable and make sure that we underpin manufacturing in this country because you can't keep subsidising manufacturing in this country to keep it open because Absolutely. Absolutely. Australian taxpayers' money runs out. Thanks for joining us, David. I appreciate it. David Littleproud there on a big day for the Coalition with this massive debate now on for young and old.